So the question is if you still need comfy UI, since OpenAI released their new state-of-the-art image model. The simple answer. Yes. I mean, it's not the first time something like this happened. And I'm not just saying that because I use comfy every single day. You know what? Let me explain. But before I do, like and subscribe for more deep dives and thoughtful analysis in Comfy UI. Okay, now let's talk. So first things first, this is not the end for Comfy UI, not even close. I want to break it down a little, what's really behind this tech, and whether we're going to see an open source version of it anytime soon. Comfy UI has evolved way past being just an image generation tool. Remember in the last video when I said Flash 2.0 was what I was hoping for in Omnigen? Well, things moved really, really fast. OpenAI just dropped a multimodal image generation model that's making everyone go crazy. And here's the wild part, it's kind of free. But there's a catch. You can only generate a limited number of images every few hours. And yeah, the generation times, painfully slow. But I gotta give them credit, this is impressive. Let me put it like this. When was the last time you saw an image generation tutorial on any comfy UI channel? And no, I'm not talking about Flash 2.0, because that's just an API. It's been a minute, right? There haven't been new models. And yet, we're still using Comfy UI. And this is because we're doing so much more with it now. We're talking video generation, lip sync, large language models, upscaling, animate diff, lure integration, photo restoration, color correction and grading, custom node creation, 3D model texturing, text to speech, speech to speech, translation, transcribing. The list just keeps going. And all of this is yours on your computer. No APIs, no monthly payments. The only reason I even sat down to make this video is because someone yanked me out of my graceful slumber and asked, so what do we use Comfy UI for now? And my answer, Comfy UI is the reason all of this exists. Companies are scrambling to outdo each other because of the open source community. So don't worry, my overly optimistic friends, we are absolutely getting an open source model soon, I hope. And honestly, it might even rival open AIs. Matter of fact, we already had a research paper on this before. You might remember it. It was called, you guessed it, Omnigen. And while it's not exactly like GPT-40's image generation, the ideas are so similar. OpenAI's GPT-40 image generator and Omnigen both have this multimodal thing going on. They're designed to handle both text and image generation in a seamless way, which means you can go from describing an image to actually generating and editing it all in one system. They both handle insanely complex prompts. They generate detailed, contextually accurate visuals, and they're all about simplifying workflows so instead of jumping between different tools for image creation and editing, you get one unified platform. But here's where they're different. OpenAI's model is deeply tied into GPT-40, which means it's pulling from an enormous language model to generate not just photorealistic images, but also precise text rendering. OmniGen, on the other hand, combines a large language model with a vision model, but does it in a way that skips separate text encoders or adapters. It's a different approach, leaner, more research focused. And then there's accessibility. OpenAI is clearly building a product here. Their model supports things like transparent PNG exports and brand-specific customization. Omnigen is a bit more experimental. So basically, the open source community was so close to what's happening now, and I have this feeling that Beijing is not gonna sleep on this. Google dropped their model. Then OpenAI took one look at that and went, hold my beer. I'm really starting to enjoy this competition. I won't even be surprised if DeepSeek comes up with a multimodal LLM-based model that's free and open source. So here's how OpenAI's GPT-40 image generation works, at least to the best of my understanding. The 40 image generation model isn't just some separate tool, it's actually built into GPT-40 itself. It's a natively multimodal model, meaning it was trained on a combined dataset of online images, text, and get this, sound. That's already a big deal because traditionally diffusion models are mostly trained on just text and image pairs. But this, this seems to be something else. Now, let's talk about how it actually works. At its core, GPT-40 uses a huge autoregressive transformer model, which is the same type of architecture behind large language models. But here's the twist. Instead of just predicting the next word in a sentence, it can also predict the next part of an image or even an audio sequence. That's because it was trained on a dataset where all of those things, text, images, and sound are deeply interconnected. The model is at an advantage because it understands the relationships between different types of data. First, image generation is infused with world knowledge. It isn't just pulling from an image dataset. It's also leveraging everything it has learned from text. That means it can generate more contextually accurate intelligent images based on what you ask it to create. 
Second, it's really, really good at text rendering inside images. If you've ever used AI image generation before, you know how much of a struggle it's been to get readable text in an image. But because this model understands language natively, it does a way better job. And third, it has in-context learning built right in. So if you upload an image or reference a past generation inside a conversation, it can actually understand and build on that context, making the whole process feel a lot more intuitive and interactive. Now, if we break this all down into a simple process, it basically works like this. Tokens, then transformer, then diffusion, and finally pixels, your text prompt, and any other inputs like images or context, first gets converted into tokens. Tokens are just the numerical representations that AI uses to process information. Then these tokens go through the transformer architecture. This is where the model actually understands what you're asking for and figures out how to turn that into a visual output. Finally, instead of directly outputting an image, it uses a diffusion-like process as a kind of decoder to generate the final pixels. That's what allows it to create images that are not only detailed but also coherent and context-aware. So what makes this different from older image generation models? Well, basically it's native integration into a multimodal large language model, which enables it to leverage that broad understanding of text, images, and even audio to create images that actually make sense. It's not just guessing, it's reasoning in a way that previous models simply couldn't. Maybe I'm wrong, but let me know in the comments if I missed something, or if I'm way off on how it works. This video unfortunately doesn't warrant a workflow, but I promise I'll put one together for you tomorrow. And if there's one thing to take away from this, it's that open source development is the reason all of this is happening. So keep using Comfy, don't be afraid of the spaghetti, and embrace the chaos. If you need free workflows, check out sneakyrobot.org. I'll drop the link in the description below. Go ahead and like, subscribe for more rants and philosophical conundrums. Let's keep this conversation going. See you in the next one.